Greetings friends! About 50 days ago, I did a video sharing with you how and why my family keeps the Passover and Days of Unleavened Bread. Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you another festival that we keep called the Feast of First Fruits. It's also called the Feast of Weeks and Pentecost. And I'm going to talk about why we keep this feast and how it relates to what we do here on the homestead. Growing up, I lived in a number of different suburban neighborhoods around the Charlotte, North Carolina area. And the way I lived back then is way different than I live now. Today, I'm a farm boy. I love being outside. I love connecting with the animals. I love growing food. But back then, I didn't have anything to do with agriculture, growing food, raising animals, none of that. I was a typical city, suburban city boy, and pretty much just spent a lot of time I did play sports, but I spent a lot of time indoors, but no contact at all with anything farm related. Not at all. And then as I started to grow up, I pursued a career in the fitness industry and I worked for years as a personal trainer and nutritional coach and even competed for a number of years as a natural bodybuilder. I loved being in the gym. I loved flexing and loved seeing my muscles grow and, and loved being on stage and, and I loved doing the pose downs. I had an absolute blast while I was doing it. However, after a certain time, a number of years ago, my heart in mind just began to completely change and my whole perspective on life began to change and I got to the point where I went from loving being at the gym and loving that atmosphere to absolutely hating it and wanting something completely different so at that point in my life I really just began to begin analyzing and proving to myself what it was I actually believed in life and proving my beliefs to myself and I actually felt a calling to be more connected to the land, more connected to the animals and just to live a completely different lifestyle. And as a part of that journey, I felt a calling to really begin keeping the biblical festivals that God outlines in the Bible. And one of those festivals is the Feast of First Fruits, Pentecost. And as I was studying about these feasts, I was noticing that they didn't belong to any particular group of people, but in fact that they are God's feast, the Lord's feast, the eternal one that lives forever and ever, and he's held them and established them by an everlasting ordinance, and they're to be kept for forever. I was like, wow. It was like, bam, it just hit me, and I was like, I think I need to be keeping these feasts. God is calling me to keep these feasts. And over the past 10 to 12 years that I've been living this lifestyle, more connected to the creation and having uh, somewhat of an understanding of God's Word, I've been able to see the connection between the physical aspects of creation in relation to the spiritual principles of God's Word and ultimately how it all reveals God's plan for each and every single one of us and it's pretty amazing and ultimately he desires for us all to keep his feast including this one the feast of first fruits and he actually says that it should be done as a statute for forever there it is forever again so what is a first fruits I get that question asked when I mention it sometimes in videos what is a first fruit Mike what is that well a first fruit is the first agricultural produce of a harvest for, for any crop and religiously that first fruit those first fruits are to be given as an offering to God via his priest and throughout the year whenever we're harvesting a crop of something whatever we take the first that first harvest of that crop a portion of it the first fruits of that and then we give it as an offering whether it's we're growing radishes or we're growing beets or leafy greens or strawberries which strawberries is one that we just started really having a really good crop of right now Wow, you're doing a great job here, Sailor, with all these strawberries. Man, this is pretty exciting to see them. 
This is the most strawberries that we've ever harvested here. And it's just the first harvest of the year out here with our strawberries. Pretty exciting. What do you think? I think it's really exciting. Anything that we have an increase of from the produce of our land, we give as an offering of first fruits. That's just the principle that God says. And there's a powerful lesson in that. It's, I'm not sharing that with you saying, hey, look at what I give. I'm giving something good. No, I'm sharing that as a principle because it's a powerful lesson for each of us. In giving that offering of that first fruits and acknowledging those first fruits is actually acknowledging that God gives us the ability to do it all. The ability to grow it from the seed, the ground, and all the resources involved in, in being able to grow that thing to the physical energies and bodies that we have to be able to put the work into planting that seed and everything needed to actually harvest it and have the hands to be able to harvest it. <laughs> so it's an acknowledgement to God for that blessing. And I know some of you may be like, man, that's just weird. That's just awkward. That's just ritualistic. That's just, I, don't, I don't know, Mike. I don't, I don't know. Well, let me tell you, there is blessings in doing these things. It says, a good understanding have those who do his commandments. And there's blessings involved in that. So I'm not trying to pressure you. you we each have to do what we're called to do. But I'm telling you, there's blessings in doing what he says to do. The Bible refers to three harvest seasons of barley, wheat, and grapes. And before the people were to consume any of the grain that was harvested on any particular year, they were to present it before God as an offering. Not just any day, but on this day of Pentecost, the Feast of First Fruits. They were to offer to God the very first fruits of that grain. And tradition has it that as the people traveled up to Jerusalem bringing up their first fruits, they would come with singing, playing instruments like flutes, and they would have their oxen carrying their, uh, their baskets that they would have their first fruits in. If they lived closer to Jerusalem and they didn't have to make quite the voyage, they would have fresher produce that they would be bringing, and others would, would dry some of the things out, have dried produce that they would bring, and, and some of the wealthy your people would have baskets decorated with silver or gold or others would have wicker baskets that were peeled willow branches and it really was an interesting and really neat occasion they really looked forward to it when they were doing what they should have been doing and they were blessed for it now i'm not growing any barley or wheat to be able to present or not even grapes wish I was growing some of those but the first fruits that we are have of the crops that we do have growing I want to make sure that we are acknowledged the one who gives us the opportunity and the ability to be able to do it and we do so on this day of first fruits and another really neat thing about this festival is it also commemorates the time when God himself and historically, it's people believe that it was on this day of Pentecost that God thundered down his Ten Commandments as he's speaking them powerfully to Israel. And even years later, that in the New Testament church, they kept this feast. And when they were keeping it together, that it was God who poured out his spirit on them, which wrote his laws on their minds and their hearts and gave them a new mind and a new heart and an ability to take on and develop the very nature of God himself. That is amazing. And this feast, just like all the others, pictures so much. It connects the agricultural aspects of the physical creation to the spiritual things of life. And that we who are called now are to be God's first fruits of his harvest. But just like we have a small harvest now as the first part, the first fruits of the harvest of the growing season, that we expect bigger harvest to come. And it's the same with God, that he will have a bigger, bigger harvest and can be even tastier. Because if you ever thought about it, the, the first fruits that you get, the first produce of a harvest, usually, it's usually not the best, but as time goes, you can have bigger 
plumper, plumpier, whatever, if that's a word, <laughs> juicier <laughs> harvest of fruits and so many other things in the later harvest of a particular crop. Just something to think about. Do you keep this feast of first fruits, Pentecost? Do you keep it? Let me know in the comment section below. I would love to hear how you keep it. Some people view these days as a burden. It's not. These are blessings to be able to do what God says. So make sure you stay tuned to see what future harvests we have here and are blessed with. And if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel and sign up to receive notifications each time I release a new video. Happy Pentecost, First Fruits, Feast of Weeks, to those of you who are celebrating it. To those of you who aren't, it's okay. I hope you have a wonderful day, but I encourage you to look into it. You never know what blessings you might receive if you start keeping some of these days. So I'll provide some resources that you can check out in the show notes below just to help you in your study of this material if you want. But that's it for now. Happy Pentecost, happy Feast of First Fruits. See you later.